Marxism is a kind of a belief and a political economics ideology where you have the system, one party dictatorship, one political point of view, no rights or free of association to speak and express. So they created the community of council, Soviet Union. Union means people are getting together and Soviet means council, people of council. They created it. Which you can call it USSR before the Russia divided from before Soviet war. So this is a kind of ideology where the difference, major difference from capitalistic society by Adam Smith was that communists believed that there should be no free trade or open market system. Absolute authority is, should be given to the communist party, the people who are just elected for a particular selection of like few selected people, they will be keep ruling you. There is no competition. There is no promotion. You are there, you are there, that's it. If you are anointed for some per, 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 for some place and position, you will be there sticking there forever. And this was a problem in Islamic capital system, Islamic system, which I will come at the end, inshallah. I will tell you, and I will tell you the solution what Islamic economic system is to the Western world so you can see where the truth lies and where the where the better solution or the optimal solution is for economics. But at the end, inshallah, not now. So this communism, basically communism changing into one part which you call socialism, meaning to get interaction and get socialized. I'm not going into that. We're gonna discuss a political through economics. You have to understand that sometimes politics and economics are intertwined or linked together together because you cannot separate them. They're inseparable. But you have to point one part out of it, which is economics. And of course, politics are used to make economics of the country. So this is the point now. Communism, capitalism. Books were written, ideologies were developed. Number one, capitalism was something developed by Adam Smith and I'm, I'm not, I, I'm, I mean, I don't want to go into detail of that because right now we are living under capitalistic society. So most of the people, they are aware and acknowledge of this society, capitalistic, where you have free market competition, where you have private ownership, you can have private sector, you work whatever you want to work, free competition, which is very near to Islam, Islamic economic system. But there is a difference, which I'm going to explain. There is a difference, which I will discuss at the end. So let's put this aside. But Adam Smith's work of capitalism or money, money system, monetary system was not actually, what I'm going to say like about Islamic as it is, but still some of the fundamentals were intact and compatible. Problem came, which the people, bulk of the people do not know. It was communism. Some of the points, the key points in communism were very good. But the problem is, ultimate result was a failure. When you have no rights of association, when you do not have anything, no promotion, the biggest factor is that you are not motivated anymore. There's no motivational force which put you and to drag you to do something. So that was the downfall of that era, communism. So how are we gonna start? Das Kapital, written by Frederick and Karl Marx on the basis of total atheism. They don't believe in any people. So see, once you do not believe in any religion, you're an animal brute. Allah says in the Quran, Surah Al-Hashr, Allah says, when you forget my warning, I will make you forget your own selves. So you act like a brute or animal. And you define that. How much, you know, brutalities, atrocities Joseph Stalin did. His name was Joseph Stalin, meaning the man of steel. He called himself a man of steel. 
very wise intellectual person, but he was not considered intellectual among his personal council. And the leader, the most important key figures was who? Vladimir, Vladimir Lenin. Lenin was the person, a Bolshevik party who got a power in Russia. And Joseph Stalin was a person, you know, where you like, like, a, like a criminal record person. And before the Russian, before the, this uh, Vladimir Lenin came into power, those people were ruling Russia. There was a complete family of Russia. Uh, those people were ruling Russia before these people came. And those were not like in the detail that what exactly those were doing as economic, economical point of view. But of course, the influence of those uh, capitalistic society was there through Europe, Frankfurt from Rothschild family from Europe in 16th centuries came. Later the people, people and people and people on and on. So this, this uh, czars, the Russian rulers before the, this uh, Bolshevik party member, when they created party and made agitation against the economic system, the leader was Vladimir Lenin. And Vladimir Lenin, he was having a very important figure as his assistant, Leon Trotsky. I'm sure I'm pronouncing their na names correctly, but these are proper nouns, please don't try to find my mistakes. Leon, I think so, Trotsky, something like that. And he was his assistant. Now, Joseph Stalin, from his childhood, he was having so many problems, like maybe uprising problem about like in childhood maybe he was uh, you know humiliated or maybe bullied uh, he was a traumatic person so many traumas in his life and you know that when you are being bullied or if you are a bullied child you know you things will not go well all your future all around so this person when while he grew when while he grew he was from georgia not from Russia, not from Moscow. He was a, from Georgia, from a small town. And he was always in the eager to topple down the Tsar's rulers. Tsar's T-S-A-R, T silent. Tsar are the ruler of Russia before these people came in. And this guy want, always wanted to have an opportunity. So there was a party Bolshevik and Menshevik. And I think so, where Vladimir Lenin belonged to this guy, and they were having very brutal kind of ideologies. So Joseph Stalin met him as a, as a role model. He was his mentor. And then he met him, and he became his protege. And they started a relation. But when he grew up, the matters, he went to jail and came back. When, after Tsars, you know, their the power was toppled down, Vladimir Lenin became the ruler of the nation and they call it Soviet Union Council in Russia. Frankfurt, the book Das Kapital by Karl Marx and Frederick Angels created a great impact on Russia that this communist system is the best system. There's no other system beside that. And it was, you know, and it created a loggerhead between the Soviets and America across the Atlantic Ocean when they came to know all those propensities, problems started. So, they invited Joseph Stalin to be the part of the member and he was one of the very finest close members of this party. This, but the problem with Joseph Stalin was he was being ignored in the party. Vladimir Lenin took him as a good person, as, as his close associate. But the problem is Leon Trotsky, he didn't pay attention to him. And Joseph Stalin remembered all these things. And he was waiting for the right opportunity to take revenge from this person, Leon Trotsky. After the death of Vladimir Lenin, Joseph Stalin became the supreme leader of the Soviet Union. 
And there he took all those revenges, especially from Leon Trotsky, because when Leon was in the member, he did not appreciate Joseph Stalin because he said to Vladimir Lenin that Joseph Stalin is not an intellectual person and they didn't pay attention and Joseph was not the person who just forget things like that he took the revenge and because of that they, he put him at a you know I don't want to go into detail he put him on the charge of something treason or something he had to flee from Russia and he went to Mexico and over there he was assassinated who assassinated him nobody knows so this was the story of Leon Trotsky so now Joseph Stalin got the opportunity for the big opportunity of implementing the inspiration of Das Kapital, which is what was communism. And this was the alarming proportion or alarming issue for the Western countries. Why? After the World War II in 1945, the problem of Germany was gone after the death of Hitler. Joseph Stalin didn't like Hitler. Joseph Stalin was the student of Lenin, Vladimir Lenin, and Hitler was on the different grounds. Because the problem with Hitler was he was also aspiring to conquer the whole Europe and Russia. Joseph Stalin was also inspiring to, you know, to uh, aspiring to conquer the whole Europe. So the clash of powers came and America has to intervene. America had to because there was no other option left. After the Germany, after the World War II, some of the countries like Poland and all the countries which got freedom, freedom from, uh, from the nation they were ruling, they were not the slave nations anymore but they were called satellite nations. Satellite nation is a nation which is controlled by you, like not directly controlled by someone, but somehow due to some reason, maybe, you know, on the back of the stuff, all the controls are given by, all the controlling is happening by them. So you are just like a state a satellite, like a satellite revolving around a planet. So they were the satellite nations. Slowly and slowly, they were getting freedom, freedom, freedom after World War II. And then the altercation started, the problem started, to whom these countries they belong to. So there was a meeting, Yalta meeting, Yalta conference in Yalta, around 1940s, early 50s. Don't ask me the dates, you can set yourself. And in Jalta conference, they were deciding what to do about this Germany. What is the future for Germany? America and, and yeah, people who were in Jalta conference was Winston Churchill from UK as a representative and Roosevelt from America before Truman and Joseph Stalin was there and all these three, but this conference didn't produce any result because America was talking about democracy to be implemented. Joseph Stalin also wanted the same. But the problem happened, Joseph Stalin's democracy was not what America was thinking. And this is true when doctrine proved it, when they came to know later that this is not the case what we are talking about. America, American democracy, that's why I told you in the beginning, political has, politics always has a democracy as a political point of view also has economics in it. American Western democracy is based on the grounds of capitalism. And Joseph Stalin wants the democracy on the grounds of communism. That was the problem. So altercation happened. This problem came. And now what's the solution? Both are trying to attack one another somehow. So Yalta conference went without any purpose, without any, any results. Then later on, the things were escalated in the Truman a conference, when the second conference happened, over there, it was very clear for Americans to think that Joseph Stalin wanted to conquer what Eastern Europe, which he did. All the Eastern Europe was under the control of Soviet. 
and from Germany to the western half of the Germany to the west side was controlled by American influence. So they wanted to give money and money and most so many things happened. Let me cut the long story short. This Berlin blockade implemented by Joseph Stalin, the capital of Berlin, that no nothing will be crossed over. So the Ber Berlin was the capital and Berlin was blocked by the eastern sources. So nothing will be beneficial for the western Ber western Ber uh, Ber uh, this uh, Berlin and Germany, western Germany, all along with the western European countries. So America had to do airlifting. They sent many helping aids and all that's a Marshall plan, they call it. Marshall aid plan. And Soviet and the, this guy, Joseph Stalin knew that the Marshall aid is basically is the buying and the power to dominate the American dollar bill. And this is what I always said that it was a power of domination about economics. So Joe Stalin was somehow correct. America is intervening to put his world global agenda, new world order, and you have faced it now and you know it. All the currencies are supported by American dollar. And this Joseph Stalin knew it. This Marshall Plan is made the dominance of American dollar and American people or American nation to the Eastern Europe, to the Western Europe, because the aid was given to do and some of the Eastern Europe too. But Joseph Stalin was standing there and he did not let it happen. So these things were happening, fighting for communism and capitalism on what grounds? The grounds of power that our system must be there, this and our system must be there, and both system got failed. Why? Communism, communist system, what is there? The, the, the end result was famine in Russia. They got famine. And all those blocking and all those things, you know, this Iron Curtain speech by Winston Churchill, that he said there is a curtain between the Western and the Eastern Europe, which is Joseph Stalin's political. Joseph Stalin wanted all this upper lower part of Europe to be the Soviet, including Turkey. And the other side, the right side, they wanted to control all the Western, France, Italy, that should be under the American influence. And they were fighting. And either you want to call it fortunately or unfortunately, America won. They got them beat, beaten down. So after the death of Joseph Stalin, the influence of communism was just left between, you know, China and there was also a Korean War, North Korea, South Korea, you know that what happened, also America intervened and, you know, somehow they protected the influence of communism towards the South Korea. And North Korea was, uh, came into that and China intervened and somehow the, the, the situation didn't go well, so they produced the lines of equator lines and now the North and South are divided. So some has a communist influential influence left and others are gone. What remains at the end? The reason what I'm telling you all this, not to show that about the knowledge and all those words, to show you that this is the history which got millions of people died and killed on the grounds of social injustices. Do we know this? Being Muslims. How many people were killed because of this capitalism, communism? When we were having Islamic system, we never spoke, we never studied. Bonaparte, he said that we need Omar to provide social justice in the West and the East. We don't know, we didn't read. Jab when Obedullah Sindhi met Leon Trotsky and when Ubaidullah Siddhi taught him, told him all about the economic system of Islam from Umar ibn Khattab, he asked him, replied to him, why didn't you implement? Why didn't you implement? We killed so many people because of these nonsensical ideas. What should we do? What should we not be doing? You had the idea why didn't you implement even in the small portion of the world so we can learn from you as a model, as a demo. And Ubaidullah Siddhi, you know, Sindhi Rahmatullah put his head down in shame and accepted that we lose it, we lost it. We should, we were the torch bearers, but we failed in that. We couldn't do anything. We were busy in our own rat race and all problems. What is the system now? What system should we go for? Communist system is not compatible, compatible at all with Islam. 
So somehow it was better in the Soviet war. Even Pakistan, Afghanistan intervened. And Alhamdulillah, Allah protected us from those communistic ideologies which was coming from Russia. And Russia was divided, USSR, amal, uh, this uh, whole of the nation was amalgamated instead of balkanized. Sorry, it was balkanized instead of amalgamated and balkanized small, small states, so Yugoslavia and all those small, small states, Bosnia were the part of it and now they are independent states. They are no more satellite states. But where is the problem, guys? The system and the solution is only if we have a capitalistic society, but internal and external management in controlled situation, that is the Islamic system. If you want to have a capitalistic society, then you must provide a system which is based on internal and external controlled capital management. What's the problem with the Western democratic system of capitalism? There is no control, there's no auditing, there's no transparency. You cannot have a system which is opaque or translucent. You must have a transparent system. And this is what Islam did. It. All the capitalistic values, but in a control system. 2.5 ratio of zakat will be implemented on the people who have the possession of 85 grams of gold per annum, per lunar calendar as a saving system. You will not, if you are not doing these things, you are not obliged to pay zakat, it will be taken by force, 2.5%. From your 85 grams of gold equivalent, either it's intrinsic value of currency, paper currency, gold or whatever. Gold, silver, liquid businesses and cash, you have to pay. In Western democracy, there is no system. Take the tax, do whatever you want to do. There is no auditing. Keep increasing of debt. No system. All the system usually. Interest. All is destroying. And you know, trillions of dollars, the Western countries are under the debt of Jewish bankers, Federal Reserve Bank. Why? Because they have the system of capitalism which is not controlled. Islam system, for Islamic system provides you. One button. On the shirt of Umar ibn Khattab, Rizal was inquired by a normal Bedouin. That is the system of Islam. When Islam will come, all the capitalism will be controlled internally and externally. And then you will see everything will be coming into the order. Ma min qawmin yazharu fihim ar riba. Any nation or state crafting of the nation is based on the grounds of riba, interest, usually. The whole nation will go and strive into hunger and famine. You know, the recession came because of hunger and famine, because of riba and trust. Any nation who is on the ground, whose base is infrastructure or statecraft on the grounds of bribery, despotism, nepotism, cronyism, the nation will be destined to be a fearful creatures fearful timid nation like a fearful like a scared terrified nation illa ukhizu bir rob wa akhiru tawana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin